everyone, my name is Keely. Welcome to my channel. Welcome back if you've been here before. Today I'm going to talk about all the books that I read in the month of October. Now I managed to read 12 books in October, which I'm really pleased with. Although the month wasn't what I hoped, I'm still happy that I read 12 books. Now let me tell you, they weren't a lot of great books. <laughs> um, I did not have very memorable books this month, so it'll be interesting me trying to tell you my thoughts about them because a lot of these I've already forgotten that I read. Um, but I did still have some pretty good ones as well. As far as ratings go, I had zero one star, which looking back on the month, I don't know how because this month just felt so poor to me. But I did have four two stars, I had four three stars, then I had two four stars and two five stars. So my average rating was like 3.17, which is on the lower side, it somehow is not my worst month, but it is on the lower side. But let's go ahead and start talking about them. The first three books I have to talk about I read for my water horror reading vlog. So I will leave that linked down below so you can go and see all of my actual thoughts real time on all of these books. But the first book I completed was From Below by Darcy Coates. Now we follow a crew on this boat that are going to explore an abandoned shipwreck from like a hundred years ago I think um, and we follow like a bunch of characters and they're going diving and they're just gonna go be the first people to see this shipwreck that is so famous and when they get down there some things start going wrong um, so if you've heard of Darcy Coates before you might have heard her described as cozy horror and I am quickly realizing that cozy horror or maybe it's just Darcy Coates is incredibly incredibly boring I did not care about any of these characters. This book was 470 pages, which for horror is way too long, and for Darcy Coates is way too long. I'm sorry, I feel like I'm ranting, but this was just so incredibly boring, and I did not care about any of it. Um, I ended up giving this one 2 out of 5 stars. Next, I read The Cavern by Alistair Hodge. Now, this is kind of water horror, not really. Most of the story happens on land, um, but we follow once again, a group of people who are going to explore a cave that has just been discovered. And when they get to this cave, they realize that there might be something down there that isn't friendly. So like I said, I was hoping that this would be more water horror, but it really wasn't. There were a few like spooky water scenes and I really enjoyed those, but I wish we had more. But at the end of the day, I really did not care about these characters as much. But I will say that this was really gory and I enjoyed that part so much. The opening scene of this short book, it's a very short book, is really interesting and then it kind of lags for a little bit and then it gets interesting again. So I ended up giving this one a 3 out of 5 stars. It was a fun book but not something I'm going to think about too much. And the last book I read for my water horror reading vlog was The Deep by Nick Cutter and this is set in a world where there is a pandemic called The Gets and when people get it they slowly start forgetting things and over time they eventually forget how to live and they just die. So we follow a crew, once again, <laughs> who has discovered the cure for the gets at the very deepest part of the ocean. So this man is going down there because his brother is one of the famous scientists working on this and he has been called to go down there because something has happened and nobody knows what. Um, now the beginning of this was so interesting. Nick Cutter had me hooked, I was in, I liked the whole um, pandemic thing going on and the disease was really interested and I was like, okay, what's the cure? What's happening down at the deep, deep part of the ocean? But when we got down there, I tended to forget that we were in the ocean because it felt like we were just like in a space station, honestly. Um, and a lot of weird things started happening that I was not okay with because it was a lot of hallucinatory things and I feel like when that happens you know nothing is real so can anything really hurt you. Um, but yeah, that thing was really explained, didn't really care about the ending or anything like that so I ended up giving this one 2 out of 5 stars. This one really disappointed me because I was thriving at the beginning and was just so let down by it. The next three books I read for my new release horror vlog so definitely go and check that out if you once again want to know all my real end time thoughts about these books. The first book I read was The Sacrifice by Ren Chapeco, and this is about a cursed island. So we follow a Hollywood crew who go to this island because they want to film a spooky documentary about it, and of course things start going wrong. So this premise sounds really interesting, but the pacing of this book was so completely off for me. We would be in certain action scenes, people would be getting hurt or going missing, and I would have no idea. There was a point in this book where someone went missing, and like a few pages later they were like, oh my gosh, so-and-so is missing, and I was like, what? 
Like, when did that happen? Like, I don't remember. I felt like I was constantly trying to play catch up because it was just going so fast and nothing was really explained in depth. I don't know. It was just hard for me to follow along. I also didn't care about the characters at all, like any of them. And there was also a weird, like, romance subplot in this where there was this influencer boy and he was the son of one of the producers and he was like, oh, my girlfriend cheated on me. Okay, the island's haunted. <laughs> Why are we talking about that? Um, but ultimately, I give this one two out of five stars. At this point in the month, I was giving up hope that I was going to have a good reading month, but unfortunately, Daphne by Josh Mallerman came to save the day. So this is basically about a ghost story about this girl named Daphne who is said to be seven foot tall, and if you think about her too much, she will appear and kill you. And so we follow a basketball team who... The night before one of their games they're having a big sleepover and someone mentions the story of Daphne and so of course they all start thinking about her and then they start dying one by one. Now this one was really interesting. I love the idea about a ghost story coming to life because you know we all did the whole Bloody Mary thing growing up and this is essentially that but with a different ghost story. Um, it was interesting to find the backstory of Daphne because she was a real person at one point in this town this book also talks a lot about basketball, so if you're not a huge sports fan, that may rub you the wrong way, um, or it may not, but it might. I love basketball, so it didn't rub me the wrong way. I also liked that the main character dealt with anxiety a lot, and you could feel her anxiety through the pages. This was a really fun read, but the ending was not my favorite, so I gave it 4 out of 5 stars. Next, I read Halloween Slaughter by Sergio Gomez, and this is the sequel to Camp Slaughter. And this book is pretty long. It is, I believe, almost 500 pages and it was worth every single page. I love this one. So if you don't know, the first book basically follows a cannibalistic serial killer, and that's all you need to know. It is set in the woods in Pennsylvania, very isolated setting, very creepy forest vibes, loved it. In this book in particular, we get small town vibes, which was really fun in a horror setting, especially because I feel like everyone knows everyone, and yet you're like, somebody's killing all these people, who's the new guy in town? Like, you know, but I really liked it. And we also follow the serial killer, which we do in the first one as well. And his perspectives are really interesting to see the kind of struggle he goes through in his head. But the characters in this one, I think I liked better than the first book. There were some, don't get me wrong, that I didn't like, but in slashers, I don't mind that because you know they're probably gonna die. And so you're kind of rooting for that. But in this one, I did enjoy following these characters more and it was a fascinating story. And it did reveal that we are getting a third book. This is gonna be a trilogy and so I'm really excited. It is bloody, it is gory. The kills are so different and unique and I really enjoyed it and I gave it five out of five stars. The next book I read was The Wolves Are Watching by Natalie Lund. I read this for Bo's Wordathon. The prompt was to read a book with the animal or creature in the title, and obviously this one has wolves. But this book is set in a small town, and one night a child goes missing. And on that same night, Luce, at her house, looks out the window and she sees two yellow staring eyes. And the little child that was missing actually turns out to be her cousin, so Luce is trying to do everything in her power to save her cousin and find her and why she went missing and what those eyes in the forest mean because she keeps seeing them and she quickly discovers that there might be some mythology going on here there might be some shape-shifting woman in the forest and it was so unique and so fascinating and the way that the lore was told about the shapeshifters was really incredible and I thought it was so well done. I really liked Luce as a character. Um, her best friend's not so much, <laughs> but I really liked Luce and how she was trying to do everything she could for her family. She was also very smart and self-sufficient and I really enjoyed it, but I also just really loved the magic and mythology that was wrapped up in this. It was so atmospheric. I could picture everything so perfectly and it was so fascinating. I gave it five out of five stars. Next I read Dead Girls Can't Tell Secrets by Chelsea Akaizo, and this is about a girl who's trying to solve the mystery of her sister's death. Her sister allegedly jumped off this cliff and she doesn't believe that she did it of her own volition and she thinks that somebody tried to murder her, so she's doing everything she can to solve this mystery. So I hated these characters. I really disliked all of them and I don't think there was any redemption arc for really any of them. I did not care about them. And I'm also having trouble exactly remembering this book. I just feel like it was very forgettable for me. 
Um, it was really fast paced, I will say that, so I read it really quickly, but there was just nothing that stuck with me, didn't really care. I liked the whole detective angle because her sister was trying to figure out these clues and everything, but I just didn't really care for it overall. I still gave it three stars because it was fast paced and fun to read and I read it really quickly, but nothing stuck with me. The next book I read was Cold by Mariko Tamaki, and this is told in two perspectives. So we follow a girl who is out of high school, and she hears about this murder at her brother's high school. And then the other perspective we follow is the boy that was murdered. So the fact that we followed the boy that was murdered and his perspective, I feel like added a whole lot to the story. His perspectives were really fascinating to me. And then we also follow, once again, that girl. And hers were pretty interesting because she was trying to figure out the mystery of this boy, Todd Meyer, and how he died. Even though she didn't really know him, but over time she started realizing that there might be a connection there. Um, this was also a snowy setting, which I really, really loved. And I really loved the writing, but there was a point in the story where I was starting to lose interest. And so overall, I'm giving it three out of five stars. The next book I read was The Woods Are Always Watching by Stephanie Perkins and this follows two best friends who they just graduated high school and they're about to go in separate directions for college so they decide to have one last adventure and go hiking and backpacking and camping through the woods and they eventually have to try to fight for their lives and survive in these woods. Um, these characters were so annoying. I did not like them at all and they were supposed to be best friends and I just did not feel it. I did not get those vibes. I just really did not like them. Um, but it was like really heart racing when they did have to try to fight for their lives. But this book was really short and so not a whole lot happened because it was only like 200 something pages. But when the action picked up, it really picked up, but it only picked up like 50% of the way through. The first 50% was just these two girls bickering the entire time and so I hated that but I really did like the action scenes so I am giving this one 3 out of 5 stars. Next I finally have a physical book and that is The Taking of Jake Livingston by Ryan Douglas. So we follow Jake Livingston and he is the only black boy at St. Clair Preparatory and he faces a lot of struggles for this. Not to mention he can also see the dead. He is a medium and one day he starts seeing the dead of this boy that was a school shooter and this shooter is trying to overtake Jake Livingston and try to basically live through him so he can basically kill off the rest of the people he didn't get to. Um, so I will say, I don't even remember my feelings on this. Like, after I read it, I completely, like, forgot everything. Um, I don't really think I cared about any of the characters. I was pretty bored the whole time, and the medium aspect really lost its interest for me because it really wasn't what I expected. Um, I just didn't really care about this, and that's as much as I can say. You know, sometimes you read a book and you don't know how to describe why you didn't like it, but I did not like this one, and I gave it two out of five stars. And finally, the last book I read in the month of October, or the last book I finished, because I started this book in July of 2021. Hold your applause, please. And that is The Stand by Stephen King. I finished this like 30 minutes ago. Oh my gosh, it is finally done. I am finally finished 1,153 pages and I read the last like 450 pages over the last three days and honestly I really wish I hadn't put this book down so much because I ended up really enjoying it. So if you don't know, this is Stephen King's pandemic novel. This is set during a pandemic and it's basically a fight of good versus evil. We have an evil man and a good woman and these two groups of people that are trying to basically fight and win. <laughs> um, I, like I said, the last 450 pages could have been like five stars for me. I really enjoyed it, but the fact that this took me so long to read and there were so many parts that lagged for me, there were way too many characters, and I didn't finally get everyone straight in my head until the last 450 pages. Then I finally started realizing who was who and who was connected to who, but it took me so long to get to that point. There were so much unnecessary bits in here, I feel like. In the end, it did all come together, so I guess it was kind of necessary. But I don't think that it was necessary for this book to be one book. I honestly think he could have made this a duology or a trilogy and I would have ate it up. I would have loved it. But I think I am going to give this four stars. I honestly thought I was going to give it two stars. There was a point where I was like, oh, one star. And then I was like, okay, three stars. And then when I finished it, I went through my rankings of Stephen King's books and it was above one of my other four star books like my enjoyment of this was above one of my other rankings so i was like this has to be four stars so i have so many mixed feelings for this but i am so proud that i finally 
finished it and I can put it on my red shelves but I did ultimately have a good time reading this especially the last three days those 450 pages were so intriguing and I really liked it so yes four out of five stars now I can finally move on to my next Stephen King so those are all the books that I read in the month of October. Let me know your favorite book that you read this month. I would love to know. If you've made it this far in the video, go ahead and leave the little jack-o'-lantern emoji because I am currently filming this on Halloween and I'm wearing my little jack-o'-lantern. But that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. As always, all my social media links will be down below and I will see you next time. Bye!